you may have seen some of the headlines in the mainstream media related to a gentleman called Gonzales, Gonzalo Lira and some headlines of Red Pill dating coach Gonzalo Lira accused of shilling for Putin is arrested in the Ukraine. Now, unfortunately, this guy has actually departed because he was imprisoned in the Ukraine, you could say, for being a Russian spy. And he never basically got out of that because of what happens in a Ukrainian prison would be the same as a Russian prison, would be the same as Guantanamo Bay, would be the same as a Chinese prison, etc., etc. So he was a journalist and he was also a dating coach, but we're going to get to the dating coach a little bit later because he is just a, such a rude and impolite person, just a horrible man. Yeah? And it's his past which brings it up to the future. So Lira also chartered his efforts to follow American reporters covering the conflict in the Ukraine, describing them as system pig journalists. That's really nice, isn't it? He commented, they're here to report how they led Ukraine up the garden path and the Ukraine is blah, blah, blah. Again, there are going to be some bad words in this video, so I apologize for them in advance. These are the people pushing the narrative so you can see them, see them real good. So he basically is going to be a Russian propagandist, you could say like Patrick Lancaster, etc, etc, doing the dirty work for the Russian media, but trying to get to convince the West, so to speak, that Russia is good, Ukraine is bad. Regardless of that fact and whatever you think of the whole situation in Russia and Ukraine, this is just, for me, a awful guy. Not because of what he's doing in the Ukraine, but what he has done in the past. And you sort of would just disrespect him because of his shady, impolite, arrogant past. We can move on to a different one. Um, Gonzalo is a 55-year-old Chile, Chilean-American who was imprisoned in the Ukraine after allegedly spreading Russian propaganda, then violating his bail conditions, and then unfortunately died in the Ukraine. Anyone who passes away, you are going to feel sorry for. And if it is under some kind of torture, could I say, well, that's pretty bad. Um, break time. Her you know, to, to check her off my bucket list. Yeah, because at that... And welcome back. If there was no advert in there, it was just a black screen for a couple of seconds. Lira is a blogger who made the transition from offering sleazy dating coach advice to men as the coach red pill to providing propaganda f folder for the Russian state media that eagerly picked up and dismissed his multiple dispatches from Ukraine. In his videos, Lira insulted the president of Ukraine, Volensky, and described Ukrainians defending their land from Russian invaders as armed criminals. Ukraine authorities allege that Lira filmed Ukraine soldiers, filmed Ukraine soldiers making special effort to capture their likeness and attempting to discredit the military scene. And it continues with that article basically saying that he would give this to the state media or to the Russian um, military so they know where they are. So, again, this is war and it, it's different rules and regulations in war. Should he be put in prison? In my opinion, yes. Should he be tortured? No. No one should be. But again, this is common and it happens everywhere. But they're, what they're doing with this and a lot of the pro people who like him, and I don't know why they like him, are saying this is wrong. Well, it happens everywhere. And this is the, maybe you could say, like the terms and conditions of war. And if you're a spy, well, you're spying in a different country for the Russians, for example. Well, this is what happens to spies. It's common practice. It's part of the job. We can move on to the next one here, saying... 
Um, speaking about Lira's arrest and the Ukraine's government, the Center for Strategic Communication and Information Security said the YouTube has been justified, um, has been justifying Russian aggression against Ukraine, violation of Article 463-2. So he used to be a dating coach, whatever a dating coach is, and then transitioned and went to Ukraine, I don't know when, don't know where he lives, and sort of did the anti, sorry, um, the anti-propaganda against Ukraine while in Ukraine. Again, this is common. We see it time and time again through um, events in history related to war and things like that. But let's go back to the past when he was a dating coach. Now, I'm going to show you a snip for about 10 seconds. And please note, this is just horrible. But this is the character of this Lyra guy. It's just dreadful. I fucked a fat girl one time. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not talking like, you know, she was sort of like chubby or a bit of a porker. No, 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 I'm talking about like a fucking whale. I mean. It sort of leaves you kind of speechless related to this gentleman, if you actually could call him a gentleman. And I would say, any woman, regardless of nationality or belief of who they support, yeah, this is just wrong. This is the crazy thing though, the people who do support him are married and they would, they believe in family, yeah? but he's sort of being really obnoxious w with this and just one-sided arrogant man from the Middle Ages. I wouldn't even say Middle Ages, I would say the Stone Ages, which is just wrong. And laughing and chuckling about it makes me just dislike the guy. Now, what happened in prison? Well, basically, we will never know. There are lots of rumours from different people like Tucker Carlson, um, who is... Um, been sacked from TV journalism over 13 times and now does things on Twitter. It would be on the mainstream media being going around. Now, whether you agree with him of the Ukraine or Russia, that's a completely different story. But what he did before as a dating coach, it was just a excuse to make women second or third class citizens and man a first class citizen and this again i repeat the crazy thing is you will see so many videos saying oh it's really sorry that he's passed away etc etc but they won't mention that he was this is what he did before he became a russian journalist doing the russian propaganda of ukraine again you can agree or disagree with me but your past remains with you and that respect you don't get because of what you said before. And especially if you're like a mainstream media kind of person, it's sort of like, it's always going to be with you. You can't take it away. There is a guy, a former military guy in America called Scott, don't know. But he does things about, um, he used to be a, something about Iraq and he searched for the weapons of mass destruction. So a weapons inspector. But his past does catch up with him and was um, penalized or prosecuted for being a pedophile or as we like to say, pedophile. There is a, another guy, English guy, American guy in Ukraine and Russia called Patrick Lancaster. If he gets caught by the Ukraine, he's going to suffer the same fate. And it's just, you have to be really careful. Now, investigative journalism is really interesting to watch, but I think it should always have two sides. It shouldn't just be, yay, Ukraine 
or yay, Putin, I love Putin, like that. It shouldn't be. It should be done like the old fashioned way, which is sort of like objective. This is what's happening. These are the facts and that's it and leave it. And it's up to you and I to decide whether Putin is a good guy or whether Putin is a bad guy or Zelensky is a good guy or Zelensky is a bad guy. So news media, especially on social media like YouTube, is very, very subjective. Maybe I am being subjective with this one. And so you can see how uh, people broadcast the news. I wish people who did have, um, you could say on YouTube, they would say that Putin is good to interview and chat and debate. Uh, you could say like Piers Morgan. Is it Piers Morgan? Um, uh, he where there's two sides to the argument. One guy is against, the other one is for, et cetera, et cetera. Then we get two sides and we get maybe sort of like an agreement at the end, or again, we have both sides of the story on one channel and we can make our own decisions who's right and who is wrong. <clears throat> Personally, if you think about the conflicts around the world, who is right and who is wrong, I would say here, Russia is wrong. Forget about the past. Yeah. Now, should they have gone into Ukraine way back in 2022? My answer is no, they shouldn't have. Should there be negotiations? Well, there will be eventually in the end after a loss, a lot of loss of life. What happened on October 7 in Israel that Hamas came into Israel? Is that right or is it wrong? Forget about the past. This is about now. Now, 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 did they have the right to do it? In my opinion, I look at the facts and I say no. And I think it's the most stupid idea that Hamas had because they knew, they should have known. If not, then they're worse than possibly that they are, that this was going to happen. And it did happen. And what's happening in that part of the world is absolutely horrible. But again, I've said this quite a few times. If Canada invaded America. Would America go, okay, no problem, come in, fine, yeah, just right, take our land, whatever, yeah. Then that's what Hamas tribe or sort of went into Israel for, but they sort of went in and then they went out again. So again, if that did happen in, let's say, Canada and America, that the Canadians came in and then sort of like took some people and went back to Canada, should it be, well, okay, uh, they, they shouldn't go to war. There is going to be. That's the state of the world today. But I do believe in negotiations and these sh should be done through a neutral democratic party who's not for or not against. So this is why China with the Ukraine war would like to intervene with it and say, let us be the negotiators. But the thing is, China is really good friends with Russia. So who, which country would be a good country to negotiate with. It's difficult because if it's the UK or Europe, for example, they're with Ukraine. So their view is going to be one-sided. The same if China intervene, they're friends with Russia. So it's going to be one-sided. Finding a neutral country, maybe like Switzerland, for example. You can get my drift and this is what happens on sort of YouTube quite a lot. I am waffling on too much, but there is a cup of coffee here today, so I would love to hear uh, your comments. I would like to hear your views. Do you think I'm an absolute fruitcake and absolutely nuts and I don't know what I'm talking about? Or do you, does it make logic or logical sense to you? This is the beauty of um, social media or uh, video platforms like YouTube. Um, people like myself can put a video out and maybe like one or two or a hundred thousand people watch and you may get a little bit of cash for it as well. And you would get followers and you would, people who don't like me will watch this. They won't give it a thumbs up. They're the people who give it the thumbs down. They won't comment so often related to it, but you know that they watch it. The other day, I think two times now, I've done something controversial about China, and I did get the um, Chinese nationalists who did actually attack me on, you could say, a cyber attack and left lots of comments related to one video. I'm sure 
I will get exactly the same with this one. But the whole thing is, I'm just expressing an opinion. And it, I may be totally wrong, but I like to hear if I'm totally wrong and maybe my thought is wrong as well. So um, it's always about education. And, and I wish that people would listen to other people. I will certainly listen to lot all the comments. I read every single comment. It may take one or two days, or it may take one or two weeks. And when I have read a comment, I will put a heart by it if I sort of agree. If I don't and it doesn't make sense to me, I will leave a question mark and that leads to another conversation, etc., etc. I want to do uh, one day in the near future some of the comments which you can't see, which do get blocked because they do have foul language in it. Now, I know on this video we do have some foul language. Granted, yep, done. But I will inform that's there. So if you don't want to listen, put it on mute, for example. But I'm just warning people. So with my comments i do have some keywords which i block which are most of these swear words and some personal insult to me just because i may well disagree with you am i doing the same here i'm not too sure but again let me know i'm always open to suggestions and like quite a few times i've had this channel for about five years i haven't made a million views or whatever on one video and on this video perhaps 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 i'll make ten dollars from it which pays for the cat food for well two days so please do like if you like it. Uh, do comment with the if you agree or disagree. That's so far. That's okay. But please make it logical and don't call me an old man who doesn't know what I'm talking about. Please be polite too, as I am being polite to you, for example, and giving you the facts. And this is what happens sometimes on YouTube channels. People blur, 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 which I've done for the last 10 minutes, but not shown any evidence. But if you watch this video at the very beginning, there is lots of evidence there from different kind of media sources. God bless to all. If you do want to support this channel, then subscribe, resubscribe, hit the notification. And <coughs> any money that comes in, thank you so much on Super Thanks. Link is in the description below, and that money will go to the Kitty Cat Foundation. So basically cat food for my two cats. God bless to all. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye.